I have a condition called granuloma annulare, and it's something that the doctors really don't understand. And uh, they can diagnose it, but they can't really cure it or make it go away. They think that it will go away after a few years, but most of the people that I know, it never goes away. And so you have to learn to live with it. And as anybody with any scar knows, living with it isn't necessarily the thing that you want to do for the rest of your life. And so choosing to do a cover was the way that I knew that I could be in public with shorts on and I wouldn't have to go explaining to them what was wrong with me. Constantly, what's wrong with you? I don't have that anymore. I can be proud of my legs. I can be proud of the artwork on them. First of all, paramedical tattooing, you have to be organic. If you go out things with black outlines and, and squares and sharp corners and, and lines, uh, medical conditions shift and they change and scars grow and shrink and the skin changes and all of that line work, all of that traditional style of tattooing gets busted and, and gets broken really quick. But when you deal with organic shapes that don't rely on outlines, it just flows with what the skin does. And the petal might change shape, but it's still a flower. Uh, dermatologists, plastic surgeons are my competitors. You know, uh, how do you fix a skin condition? How do you fix a scar? Um, you're generally gonna go to a plastic surgeon, a burn triage unit for skin grafts or a dermatologist to clear up the condition or use medicine. Um, plastic surgeons, probably the most because they have a broader tool set of what they can do, but I don't mind pushing this back on the dermatologists and plastic surgeons is, I saw problems you have not been able to solve. And I'm doing it with artwork and, and tattooing. The problem with doing scar uh, cover-up work, paramedical tattooing, is the flower that you draw on paper doesn't necessarily cover the scar or the blemish that you have on skin. And then uh, Alicia, she has both her entire legs, had the skin condition, so this was a mass amount of tattooing. It wasn't just centrally located to one thigh or one chin or one calf. It was the entirety of the legs. And, um, you know, going about it in a traditional manner of, of stenciling everything or copying photos doesn't work at all because, as I said, you put the stencil on and if there's a little bit of that scar that leaks out the side of that stencil, it doesn't work. So everything on, on your legs was almost done freehand where some of them I drew on with a marker, other ones I that washed off by the time we got to it and, and I just winged it, so to speak, improv and you know, I've, I've done a lot of orchids in, in my day in, in this particular case. And so I think there's this level of artistry. You really can't go to someone who's average, intermediate, or obviously not a beginner because they're just not going to have this ability to adapt and to draw on the fly. And I think that was a big part of our adventure and the fun we had. Yeah. As scary as it may sound, I think that was the part that we had a, a lot of fun with. Right. It, it really was because you don't know what's going to be the next stage in the development of the tattoo. What's going to be the image? How is the end product going to be? You're not going to know until it's done. And it takes a very long time and a lot of commitment for that to happen. Yeah. And confidence. You have to have confidence that the person that's working on you is going to give you the results that you're looking for. What about our ability and talent attracted you to us versus going the traditional route as we both know? Well, when I first started coming to you, I looked at your art and that's what decided in my brain that you were the one that I wanted to have work on me. I don't consider generally tattooing as something that I would do but because of the beauty of the work that you do, I thought, yeah, I, I could do that. And it was something that had been on my mind for quite a while as far as how can I live the rest of my life with the condition I had? And I decided I couldn't. And so that's when I decided to look into tattooing. And uh, I don't think I would have been happy with anybody else but your work. I consider it quite a badge of honor to walk around and have my art on my legs and people 
no longer look at my legs as though there's some horrible disease I have, but I have beautiful art. The condition that I have, the way it appears is it looks like ringworm. So that's why many people will look at you and think that you have something contagious. And as it progresses, it does go all over the skin. Many people have it on their whole body. And it can be quite a project if they were going to tattoo it. I knew that mine was restricted to my legs. And uh, I had people ask me, you know, what's wrong with you? And I would explain to them that I had granuloma annulare. Of course, nobody has ever heard of it. But it, the circles, they spread, they multiply, and uh, it, it leaves kind of a, a scarring of the skin. And it does not go away. And so for me, having to explain to people all the time what this condition was, knowing that they would never remember what it was, and probably think the next person they saw had ringworm too. Um, it made me feel it was time to do something about it to cover it up so that if they were looking at my legs, I'd give them something good to look at. What is the value of, of being able to, to wear shorts and go to the beach and nobody's talking to you about a skin condition? In fact, you know, you're probably getting talked to more now yeah. uh, because people are coming up to you going, oh my God, your legs, and I've never seen tattooing like that. Absolutely, and people always say, they're so beautiful. I've never seen anything like that before. Where did you get it done? How long did it take? Did it hurt? And all of those answers are, yes, it hurt. Yes, it took a long time. And yes, it's worth it because it is I, w I wear my art on my legs instead of on the walls of my house because I prefer it that way. I would rather have somebody comment on the beauty on my legs than the scars and wondering what's wrong with me. I remember, you know, just at the end of the day, I was really proud because I knew you were super happy. You, you, you saw exactly what you, I think you saw more than what you were after. And it kind of set the tone for our which would be, I think, a two-year process? It was at least a two-year process, yes. And uh, it takes a lot of commitment and a lot of time and a lot of confidence to continue on. But there was never a time that I said, oh, I just can't go. No, I was excited for every session just to see how the progress would be and what it would look like. And I was never disappointed. Kind of curious what, what you feel about how tattooing succeeded where doctors failed. Well, doctors, First of all, they couldn't tell me what caused my condition. Second of all, they didn't really have any recommendations for medicine. It's just something you have to live with. Well, that was not satisfactory to me. A uh, plastic surgeon couldn't do anything. They can't cut your skin off. Uh, there was no treatment that they could give me. So it was only, my only option was to either cover it up with clothing for the rest of my life but I would still see it, or do something immediate that would be gratifying for me and uh, pleasant for somebody else to look at.